around. Yeah. Holy fucking snot. I did not expect this to happen. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, well, first of all, the Neverwinter Nights 2 Let's Play got <laughs> really quite a lot longer than I uh, first thought it would be. Uh, second, well, I um, got a new sound card a while back. Uh, that, that's um, EVGA's new audio. Just, uh, it's not relevant for this playthrough because we are not piping sound through that one. Uh, long story short, uh, it broke my uh, <laughs> Final Fantasy uh, setup, so I had to do some part of the modding over again. Just one of the steps. And here's the next thing I want to mention before we get going. And uh, that is... Uh, um, before... Uh, well, in between uh, announcing this project, maybe I... Uh, come to think of it, maybe I didn't actually upload that video. Well, uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, between uh, now and the point where I decided to do this and upload uh, and it just compile, uh, make a video going over my mods and what I'm using and uh, the configurations and stuff, um, the Remaco uh, field graphics mod came out. So uh, I have not shown you that I am using that one. Uh, that is going to re be replacing the uh, 3D rendered field maps that I had uh, activated before. Okay. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, I need to drink some something after all that. So, this is my first Final Fantasy Let's Play. But it is not the first Final Fantasy I played. And, well, since this is kind of the first in a row, uh, let me just <laughs> uh, talk a little about how I uh, became familiar with Final Fantasy. Because internet was not a very big thing when I was made familiar with Final Fantasy. <sighs> yeah. Back then, we had like Netscape Navigator 3 and, and uh, Internet Explorer 4, Windows 98, and all those uh, fancy, fancy old um, <laughs> clunky uh, bits of hardware. And they were nice, don't you fucking dare cast any shit on them. Just. Just so we're clear on that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, I was looking around. I was looking around the internet for uh, MIDI music for... I have no idea why. But uh, this was before the great big file sharing craze in Kazaa and uh, Direct Connect and all of that shenanigans. Yeah. MIDI. 56k dial-up was the shiznits. I'm old, yeah? I am old enough to have used dial-up. And not as a as a retro thing, but as my main internet connection. Booyah! I made a 56k modem, and uh, 56k was actually not the first uh, internet connection I had. <laughs> Holy fucking shit! I'm gonna sound old, but hey, I'm almost 40. Might as well go I'm a full hog. Um. Okay, let's see. Uh, can I just? Push this, is that the button to bypass all this? Yeah, it is. Uh, this is not the uh, screen you may remember, by the way. This is one of the mods. Oh. Uh. Uh. Okay. My arrow keys are not controlling the uh, cursor. Um. Interesting. Okay, I will have to try to figure that out um, before I start the game. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ace, let's play. Well, anyway, so looking around for midis, I came across this, oh my freaking god, over 20 minutes long midi file 
it was the Final Fantasy VI end credits. I thought, holy fucking shit, 20 minutes, that's just cool as fuck. Whoa, whoa gotta, gotta get me some of this. And I uh, quite liked it. And I don't actually remember playing Final Fantasy VI until after having played Final Fantasy VII and VIII. I have no idea why I remember it like that. Makes no sense to me, because emulators were a thing back then. Final, F Final Fantasy VI was a thing back then. Um, it was, you know, a big game. Uh, and the PlayStation was, you know, the console. Ah, uh, well, maybe I did not pay that, didn't pay Final Fantasy a, a whole lot of attention because, uh, <laughs> because I was so into Shining Force and, um, well, there, w there was the Saturn and uh, Shining Force 3 I found out about in the, about the same time, I think. Um, but I actually think I played Final Fantasy 7 and 8 before Shining Force 3. But either way, this is, again, not the first Final Fantasy I played. And why is that? Um, well, there was this little game called Final Fantasy VIII uh, that was released at the time I went searching for these games for the PC, and uh, uh, eight was a lot easier to find. I think I uh, had to mail order, uh, well, order by mail, you know, Web shop or something, my copy of Final Fantasy VII, and uh, that was the one with the uh, funky triangular um, uh, case thing, with the uh, cardboard uh, disc uh, sleeve thing. That was pretty rad. Um, but yeah, so my first Final Fantasy was Final Fantasy VIII. The reason. I will not play the game um, is, well, A, I don't have it anymore, uh, B, I honestly don't want to play it, I, uh, well, basically it's the story and uh, selfie and uh, just, um, yeah, there are a lot of things, okay, well, maybe not a whole lot of things I like about that game, to be honest. Um, I'm, I'll get to that. Uh, but keep in mind that this is, this, is, this is going to be about Final Fantasy uh, 7. And uh, before I forget about it, uh, let's see, where is that? Ah, oh, well, yeah, that is a text editor. Yeah, good enough. Um, uh, yeah, I want to keep track of timestamps here for, for a little something regarding Final Fantasy 8. So, for all the shade I would love to cast at uh, Final Fantasy VIII now, which is, again, all about the story, I have to admit that uh, um, it was a very, well, maybe not by today's standards, but uh, back in the day, it was a very pretty game. Uh, I think it was the first game I played where they even made an effort to have a vaguely anatomically correct character models. So that was pretty cool. And uh, they were... Well, the FMVs they were of course a lot better. As we will see in Final Fantasy VII, they sometimes use different character models. Some... Uh, uh, some fancier, like they later use in Final Fantasy VIII and um, later uh, later games, but they also use some of the uh, in-game model derived uh, meshes in the in the videos. I think I have set the mods to use um, a different uh, video, no, different models. I don't know how they did it, but uh, uh, there'll be more. Um, consistent, I think. Uh, but Final Fantasy VIII, 
uh, w let, let's just get all that out of the way. It is a neat game. It is very. Uh, it has a lot of things going for it. Um, I well the uh, like junction system was a bit of hit or miss, um, and uh, for me, I just didn't really get into it. Um, and the triple triad and the grinding unnecessary to get all the good uh, magic to junction I just didn't care for it um, so well I used a trainer cheated just like merry hell and uh, that made me enjoy the game a lot more actually than I would have if I hadn't so you know feel free to dodge I won't care I will understand, but I will not care. <laughs> um, well, I think uh, the thing that stood out to me most about Final Fantasy VIII was its soundtrack. While that was a bit of hit and miss, again, the uh, tracks that were uh, uh, that were hits, they were just so goddamn good. Seriously. Um, I'm going to gush a whole lot about Final Fantasy VI soundtrack when we get there, which is the game after this one, by the way. <laughs> uh, so Final Fantasy VII first, then Final Fantasy VI, and then IX, and yeah. Uh, just, I mean, the intro for Final Fantasy VIII that is legendary for a good reason, and uh, some of the tracks, I mean, they are fantastic. I um I'm, I think that Final Fantasy VI is taken as a whole is probably the best soundtrack in the Final Fantasy franchise. However, Final Fantasy VIII probably has some of Nobuo, Uem Nobuo Uematsu's best compositions as single tracks. I mean, it's just a... Uh, the, the creepy lunatic Pandora, the epic... Uh, just... Um, just adrenaline-pumping tracks you get during the cruise missile thing, and, uh, and the uh, assault on... Uh, was it Dolay? In, in the uh, <clears throat> in the early game, and the well, the ending is probably my favorite Final Fantasy ending uh, music in the series. Mm. Um, eyes on me. Okay, well, that kind of music is again uh, all subjective, but I, I think of the ballads we've had and the. Uh, stuff. I think that is the uh, song I've I've enjoyed most, frankly. I mean, I, I, I for, Melodies of Life, uh, mm, not bad. Uh, probably uh, uh, better pronounced. Uh, 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 not to catch it on Fei Wong or anything, but the translation of the lyrics in Eyes on Me, bad. And uh, I'm sure she did what she could with it, and uh, the end result was fine. But uh, the the lyrics, the, the text is not 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 fine. No, 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 just no. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing: uh, the overture for Final Fantasy VIII, and you should be hearing it in the background. Uh, no, uh, actually. Huh, yeah, um, there shouldn't be any music in the background. I'll just mute the okay, there we go. So you can hear it just perfectly fine. Um, I mean, it just it makes me, uh, it fills me with anticipation. I, as soon as I hear it, I just, this is a game I want to play. I just, let me at this game. Just, oh yeah, oh, I get all enthused and, uh, Trying to go and I'm just mmm mmm good yeah uh, 
I actually, uh, what they're hearing now is, uh, uh, the end result of what happened when I, uh, uh well, we didn't, I wouldn't say rearrange it or anything, but I wanted to have a, a, a something in the background that is not straight off, straight off of YouTube or, uh, try to find some shady mp3 somewhere of the uh, original track. I uh, wrote down as cheat music and uh, I just worked off of some, uh, uh, well, not terribly <laughs> legit to be honest, uh, cheat music I found on the internet, some uh, corners, and uh, did my best to make an arrangement um, out of uh, well, cross checking with. We're just going to have to. Uh, no, actually, I'm going to be smart. I'm going to start the game after this, and uh, well, try to start it anyway. <laughs> if if I can get the controls to do what I think they do, and uh, I will balance the uh, levels at that time. But yeah, what is Final Fantasy VII then to me? I have actually posted a, a fairly lengthy uh, post on that topic on uh, Eyes on Final Fantasy, which is, I think, one of the leading, if not the leading, uh, Final Fantasy uh, franchise fan site on the internet. Uh, well, it doesn't it didn't really break any grounds. I mean, now that I have to think, now that I think about it, I have to admit that uh, this game is just mediocre in so many ways. I mean, there's that FMV, just polish that I mentioned before, right? Using different character models. What nonsense is that? What game even does that anymore? That's just. I mean, why did they not use the same character models for rendering? I mean, did they just start work with just one set of character models and they and were just too lazy or too busy or just couldn't be bothered to go back and re-render them with the uh, improved character models that we'll be seeing in the, uh, <laughs> well, ending cutscene, ending original cutscene, by the way, uh, just... I'm using modded cutscenes. Uh, just what is with that? And the soundtrack is not that good. I mean, it's not bad. But to be fair, the uh, and, uh, the start is really good. I, I really enjoy that. 
it it is with the imagery and all that it really brought uh, associations to Blade Runner and uh, that is actually one of my uh, no actually that is my favorite movie soundtrack of all time if I don't well if this game brings those associations out I'm all for it um, but beyond that they don't really sound all that interesting the uh, technology at the time uh, wasn't that fantastic uh, there weren't there wasn't a whole lot they could do with it I mean granted uh, we do get some really really uh, strong moments in the soundtrack and I'm not actually talking about the thing with Ares at the end of disc one uh, okay well okay just fucking deal with it this game has been out for 20 fucking years if you think of it as a spoiler now just okay but f when Ares dies uh, when, when they play her theme at that no is it her theme Uh, actually, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, well, I remember what the theme sounds like, but I don't remember if that is actually Harris's theme. <laughs> oh, I'm such a good fan, aren't I? Um, but I'm talking specifically about the events in Nibelheim when we get into the mansion. And oh, what did what did the uh, yeah, I just uh, saw something glitch at the, uh, in the capture software. Ho hoping it didn't doesn't mess anything up. Um, but yeah, when it uh, moves from that, uh, boom, 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 just looping heartbeat thing, to then morph into Sephiroth, Sephiroth's theme. Holy shit! I'm, I'm I've got. I've got to go do something else then uh, talk <laughs> uh, shortly. Uh, when it just morphs into that theme, that is fucking good. That is excellent use of music, and uh, it is just uh, my favorite musical moment. In the game, right there, in Nibelheim. There is a lot more to say about the uh, soundtrack, I suppose, um, but some few strong moments aside, it's. I mean, maybe it was groundbreaking for its time, but at the time I got into it, I'd played Final Fantasy VIII. I have to say, in comparison, this soundtrack is kind of mediocre. Uh, I mean, there are probably many reasons I'm wrong in saying that, and I expect to hear several of those in the comment section. Just type away, please. Go now. Just type away. Uh, but, I mean, that is my subjective opinion. That is how I view the soundtrack today, as mediocre. And the graphics, um, I mean, granted they are a step up from, well, more, more than one step up actually, from the Super Nintendo. Uh, this is uh, the first, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I think it was the first game by Square for the PlayStation the first where they used 3D. There's also Xenogears that they well yeah what separated what separates this game and Xenogears is that uh, Xenogears used uh, 3D environments and 2D character sprites and uh, uh, and a free moving camera oh, well free moving after a sense. Final Fantasy 7 uses of course 3D character models on uh, static pre-rendered two-dimensional backgrounds. They sometimes don't line up very well. So in that 
in that aspect, Xenogears has aged more favorably. Uh, it makes Final Fantasy VII look not so terribly polished today. So uh, that's another reason to th to just think Final Fantasy VII is mediocre. But you know, to be fair, it was a new technology. They did what they could. They um, did a lot better in Final Fantasy VIII, and then perfected it, ish, in uh, Final Fantasy IX and X. And then, of course, they went to a full 3D in uh, Final Fantasy XII and XIII. And, uh, yeah. Uh, what remains is, I mean, there's really nothing that makes this game a classic besides the story, um, I find. And, uh... Okay, well, uh, this game is, above all, very accessible. It, it's, it doesn't have a high learning curve, like Final Fantasy VIII. It, the uh, conventional menu system is still there. It looks, uh, you know, like you'd expect. It doesn't, it doesn't get very adventurous, like uh, Final Fantasy X or XII, where they have a real-time uh, of a sort combat system uh, but it's I mean it, it's familiar if you've played any JRPG you can pick up Final Fantasy 7 figure it out uh, from the very first battle okay M maybe uh, some of the uh, uh, enemy skills and uh, command materials um, and material combinations could could require some uh, studying and learning and uh, guides and the like. But uh, hey, again, if you've played any JRPG before, you can pick this up and just go. So it's very accessible like that. And uh, the setting where you sort of have uh, some aspects of modern technology. I mean, you can sort of understand how people learn things and uh, how they uh, spread information um, by modern frame of, frames of reference. And, uh, well, the music, while I would say being mediocre, is not very... Well, it, it's not uh, pretentious. It, it doesn't. It isn't minimalistic. It's. Uh, it kind of hits the sweet spot. I would. F I would say between through composed music and uh, more popular music, as J-pop, uh, common pop, rock. Um, that has worked out well for the game, but. Uh, Ultimately, there's a lot of about this game that is forgettable, except for the story. This, so the conclusion that I'm, the point I'm driving at is that uh, this game, at the end of the day, lives and dies on the strength of its writing. And uh, actually, that is that is an interesting aspect of the game. Um, uh, well, I, I maybe I should mention that uh, uh, this, the game that became Xenogears was actually uh, drafted as Final Fantasy VII. But for whatever reason, they did not go with uh, that scenario, so that became Xenogears, and now you have Final Fantasy VII, which is something completely different. And... Uh, well, a lot of things happen during development of this game. So, you know, when I hear uh, hear people gripe about how, say, uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, um, Sharp FE, uh, changed, changed a whole lot between um, 
the first draft and the first trailers we saw and the final product. Uh, I mean, well, it is fair to point out that what they announced was not what we get, uh, was not what we got. Fine. But that was also the case with Final Fantasy VII. The game started as one thing. Characters were added, characters were, characters were removed. Um, I don't think Ares was supposed to die um, in the first revisions of the script. But she did. Um, one other person that died, I think, was uh, some of the developers parents. I think it was actually Hironobu Sakaguchi's grandmother, or, well, not grandmother, maybe at his age, but, um, well, some parent, and, uh, he then, uh, um, or whatever developer that was, uh, got, ins got the inspiration from that to work its way into the story, and it became the game it is today because things change during its development so if you want to cast shade on games because they change <laughs> during the development process you cast shade on Final Fantasy 7 So, right, I think I have said my piece on Final Fantasy VII. What makes it classic, I would say, is the story and, it, and its accessible nature. Um, also, the strengths of the writing and the character interaction, I think, is something to bring up. The, the translation wasn't perfect, uh, mind you. I mean, there, <laughs> the original had this uh, <laughs> uh, famous "this guy are sick" moment. Um, I believe they have uh, fixed that in uh, later releases and later re-releases <laughs> of the game. And uh, I don't. Well. If they actually have that line making a cameo in a Final Fantasy VII Remake, I will love that. Um, now, the uh, character dialogue and exchanges in this game, of course, they are not Persona grade. But uh, a lot of this game actually pivots around uh, discussions between your party members both the uh, sort of a lead up to the final fight uh, down in the uh, northern crater the uh, scene around the campfire in the Cosmo Canyon uh, even uh, doing CPR on Priscilla to an extent um, yeah the story is mostly driven through your party members um, discussions with each other and uh, well that is timeless and now I actually really do have to leave so I might as well cut the episode here see you